everybody, you're watching Amitha Verma. So I'm getting ready to go on a shopping trip to France for some new amazing old inventory for the shop and for my home as well. So today I wanted to share with you the number one designer secret to success on any project that I work on or probably that any interior designer works on. So the big secret to getting the end result that you want, what every designer uses on all of their projects, is by creating their master shopping list. Go around through your home or through your project and start getting a dimension guide together. So you basically measure any empty space and get a rough idea of dimensions and what will fit into the space and create a shopping list per room. I'm standing here in my own home, which is under major renovation right now. I'm heading out on a trip to France and I want to really get some special pieces. And the way I go about doing that and having a successful shopping trip, finding the things that I love and really making sure that they work for me when I'm clear all the way across the world is by getting the dimensions down, the dimensions of my exact spaces and some ideal dimensions of pieces that would fit perfectly in my home. So in this project, I've already got a few pieces in this room that I'm working in. So I'm gonna show you how I create a shopping list when I already have a few pieces. So that way I know what to look for and kind of put aside the things that I've already gotten in my collection. So when I'm working on a project, there's two things that I always have. My iPhone is one of them and my measuring tape is the other tool. I keep my measuring tape with me everywhere I go. This goes in my car with me, it's in my work bag. If I travel anywhere, I take this little handy guide with me wherever I go. And the reason why I like to use my iPhone, you're most certainly on the hunt when you're on the go, you're in the car, you're driving around, you see a place you wanna go check out, and you wanna have your dimension guide with you available to you all the time. So here's how I start. I'm gonna get my measuring tape out, and I'm gonna start measuring my wall. Now sometimes I write down the entire wall dimension just to make sure I have a good record of how much space I'm working with. So I've got here my wall is basically about 63 inches wide. So I get over here to my iPhone. I'm going to open up my notes so you can see my notes tab. And then I'm going to create a new note and I'm going to write in here dimension guide, breakfast room, buffet wall, 63 inches why? And I want to have a little bit of room on either side. So I'm going to sort of envision with my measuring tape, got my measuring tape, about the biggest size I would possibly want. So here I can see the largest size I probably want might be around 54 inches. That's going to leave me a little bit of room on either side. And then the smallest piece I might want. So in this case, the smallest piece that I would probably want to get is 48 inches wide. So I'm going to pick up my phone and I'm going to write that. The wall is 63 inches wide. And then I'm going to say looking for 48 to 54 inch wide piece. Now I want to check the height and make sure I am aware of what my ceiling heights are. So as I'm doing my dimension guide, I'm gonna think about something that's 48 inches to 54 inches wide and anywhere from about six to seven and a half feet tall. I'm working in a smaller space, so I need to make sure my sconces are not too wide and my mirror is not too wide so it can all fit together. Just from looking at it visually, I know I need something a little bit narrow. And I also want to remember that I have a mirror in there and I don't want my mirror to be overly narrow as well. So if I'm looking at where the, the boxes are, the junction boxes, I can just kind of see that maybe about 10 inches is where the width of the sconce that would fit this space really easily. So if I look in between each box, I've got 36 inches in between and I want to take out five inches on either side to allow for the backplate and for the sconces. So if I take out about 10 inches, that leaves me about 24 inches for a mirror. So I can just really visualize 24 inches is about the width of the mirror that I want to look for. So that helps me put it on my shopping guide, what size sconces to look for, and then after that, what size mirror would fit in conjunction with those sconces. I hope you've enjoyed today's topic. 
I know it's not as glamorous as some of the beautiful things you get to see at my shop or some of my antiquing trips, but this is the fundamentals. This is where it starts, this is how it starts, this is how all projects really should begin. Get it on your phone or whatever gadget that you use that travels with you wherever you go. I know it's a little tedious and it might take you a day or two days or an afternoon and it's not as fun as shopping and getting inspired, but when you've got the list, the thrill of the hunt becomes so much more fun and you really get excited when you find something that can fit into those dimensions that you've got to work with. It's the number one weapon, the number one secret that every single designer uses on a successful project. If you like this video, please like it, leave a comment, or share it with a friend. I'd love to hear your comments about how you may have implemented this technique and what success that you have found from it. So if you've enjoyed it, you know someone who could use this tip, please share it. And thank you, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you around the shop soon.